Um, I'm Dr. Willett Boyer. Um, I'm working with the Cemetery Preservation Association and the Osceola Research Institute on the Jefferson County Historical Site Survey. We're doing historical research here at the Springfield Paul Bear Cemetery and I'm here with uh, Reverend Thompson who is the head of the Paul Bears Association. And Reverend Thompson, um, uh, you want to introduce yourself, uh, 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 give your name, uh, how old you are and all? Yes, I'm James Thompson. I'm Reverend James Thompson, and I've been around here for the last 80 years. So uh, I've been here at this cemetery, the uh, president of this cemetery for the last 65 years. And before then, I was with my dad and all digging graves and uh, burying peoples here. So I've been. Uh, here since I was, you know, big enough to know anything. Well, the cemetery began uh, from what we understand in 1840. This plot of land uh, was uh, two ac uh, five acres gave to them for a burial, for burial ground. And when the burial ground got started, then they began this church, uh, the Kansbanka uh, Baptist Church, uh, four men, Mr. William, Mr. Nelson, my grandfather Nelson, and his two more men. Uh, I don't have the name, but I'm going to get it to Dr. Boyer, uh, the, the four of them named that uh, bought the property. And we don't know whether the slave owner uh, gave them the money to buy that property for them to have a place of worship. Uh, they done it out whatever little monies they had bought that property to begin that church. And after uh, some years, they uh, began their own cemetery. And that lessened the burial uh, spots up here because they started that cemetery on, on the 19 up there. And that called, it's uh, called the Bird Cemetery, but yet it was another pallbearer into that bird cemetery and uh and you know the lady that uh you know mrs um uh, uh, my god uh, ola mother ola lamar mother ola lamar civil right yeah okay she right. had the records and you know she died and ola was supposed to get me the records but so far i hadn't heard she hadn't got me anything concerning the other family that uh, is in affiliation with the Bird Cemetery. Okay. All right. This is Sylvester Peck. I'm behind the camera, so I'm, I have a follow-up question. And thank you, Dr. Boy, for doing an outstanding job of getting, getting us here. Uh, now, the cemetery, the, this Paul Bear Cemetery, does it have a specific name and possibly a number? This one? To it? Yes. Springfield Paul Bearers, number 10. Springfield Paul Bearers, number 10. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right, I'm ready. We're good, we're good to go. All right, Reverend Thompson, um, you and I were talking about how um, uh, you uh, remember this area over here. You know, that's over here on the sides where these woods are. You know, being more open um, in the time past. And you had just mentioned, you know, how long you've been doing this since you were a boy. Um, how you mentioned that that you helped your dad. You know, you know, before you took over the responsibilities yourself. Back then, what exactly um, did you do when someone passed away and, and let's say they, they you know, wanted to be buried here, what actually happened? How did you and your dad take care you know, of things and, and how was that person end up getting you know, buried here? Well, uh, everybody that's buried here, somewhere, it's a family lineage was there. Yes, sir. Okay, they would get uh, the pallbearer president Mm -hmm. Society president and let him know such and such a one died and we want to bury, we're going to bury. So my dad and Abe Swan and James Leslie and all of these men, these older men, got together They and come with the wagons and the shovels mm -hmm. and they dug the grave. Okay. And, you know, back then there wasn't no such thing as no casket, I mean, no. Mm -hmm. uh, no vaults, you know, they right. just put them in a wooden box and put them in the ground and cover them up, you yes. know, after the ceremony, okay. you know, and uh, 
it was a long, long time before the first uh, vault got put out here. Yes, sir. It had to be somewhere in uh, around 50, well, I got two was buried, a man, his mother was buried there, and that was 1956. It must have been around 1959 okay. when the first uh, vault got put out here. Yes, sir. Um, let me ask you this, if I could, uh, Reverend Thompson. You mentioned the fact that, that when you were a boy, when you and your dad and these other men were, were doing that, that you didn't have a vault, that you had uh, a wooden coffin. Now, something yeah. we've been wondering about with this and the others, um, did most people at the time also have, like, wooden markers? Was there any type of marker that was put on the ground surface? The, the first markers I remember, old man Clement Tillman, he was the funeral director, he had a little, a little, they, they, they did put markers and some of them put some little, and I can show you one little piece right up here where, where they, it's homemade. Yes, sir. But uh, the first uh, professional marker, he had a little, little uh, two by four little marker on it and it was in, it was encased with the, with the, uh, the dead uh, person name and it was stick down in the ground. Yes, sir. You know, and over the years, you know, leaves and dirt, they, you know, got beat down in the ground. But I can show you a picture of one, some, the older folks tried to make some homemade, and there's one left now. Okay. Uh, is that that one up there yeah. that has the concrete? Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you remember there ever being, uh, like, wooden markers? Did anybody make them out of wood, or were they all? Yeah, they wrote them on cypress boards. Okay. They, they, they engraved them in, 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 uh, on a cypress, you know, slab, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they lasted for years and years, you know, cypress, you know, uh, weather beaten, uh, the more weather beat it is, the plain it get. Yes, sir. You know, and for years, and I'm pretty sure if you went out in there and in some of these places, you would find, you would find some of them now. You yes, know. sir. I was wondering about that. My grandfather, you know, um, he had things made out of pecky cypress and they mm -hmm. roll because it'll mm -hmm. last so much. You know, the bugs don't eat it the same way right, you do some right. of the others. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Right. Um, let me uh, 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 ask you if I could. Um, do you mind maybe walking a little bit over there, you know, at least close along this edge and, and, and maybe asking some questions about some of the places here and, you know, tell me a little bit about what no, you I don't know. mind. We don't need to get too, too grave out there because, uh, you know, this always was rattlesnake country. Oh, I, I, And this I, I, time I, of year, they, you know, they blend in with yes, that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, I wasn't thinking about getting out in the woods. Okay. I figured maybe walking here on the okay. edge where we got a couple of the things we could see. Okay. Right. And I appreciate you doing this. Thank you. One and... Now, Reverend Thompson, what we're looking at right here, but this is what you were talking about before. You said that the, the dimensions that you dug um, that uh, were six foot by four foot wide and six foot deep. Right. Okay. Six by six by four. Yes, sir. Do you happen to remember um, how big usually were the, the uh, coffins that were made? Um, I mean, just roughly about uh, uh, what size were they? Just just big enough to fit inside. Yeah, or bigger yeah. Smaller. It wasn't no. You didn't. You know, just what would fit. That's, yes, sir. That's yes, sir. Okay. Now let me ask you this. I know it's grown up a lot, and I know all the way along this road where we've been looking, you can see over here. There's another area that's got like a, a footstone, you know, right, a small stone right, there. Uh -huh. Um, what, when you were a boy, do you remember, did, did your dad or did anybody mention, what was the oldest part of the cemetery? Did, did, did anybody point this out? This is it. This is the, this, this is, is it. it. Right. Uh -huh. If we were looking for the burials that, that started around 1840 and from then the on, gate. from the gate right, on up right, here. Right on up here. Now, as I was saying, it, it spread, it didn't, this, we made this, this, this road here, but it was down a little bit further. You know, like when you come from right there, it went, it went to your left there, uh, maybe yeah. by that big, biggest, uh, whitest looking tree there. Yes, sir. That that was uh, about the line then. Okay. So the road has shifted a little bit over time. Right. This we we shift this road, you know, because we we uh, we they they was down there, but we shifted up here because so much empty space. Mm -hmm. was up here, you yes, know, sir. and so that's why they they kind of divided it where, you know, you'd have both sides of it. 
yes, sir. both sides of the road. Well, Reverend Thompson, um, 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 if you don't mind me asking a personal question, because this is or, or a couple of personal questions. Cause this is something. When you, how did you make the decision um, um, when you were a boy and you were working with your dad? How did you end up deciding, uh, first of all, to become a minister? And how did you decide that that you felt like the the? How did you end up doing it? Uh, on on the minister part, I was uh, I was called by God. Yes, sir. You know, I, I knew and I felt the calling by God to become a minister. But uh, on on the my boyhood, I just was always you know I, I couldn't be still when I see something going on, and you know the old those older men took. Uh, note of that mm -hmm. you know and they all just took me under the wings you know i'd be out here on sunday morning with them digging a grave not me digging them but you know whatever i could do i would and it just just went you know yes, it just flowed yes sir mm -hmm. yes, that makes sense now if you don't mind my asking uh, uh reverend thompson you know i grew up um um you know in uh, the presbyterian church and i still go there when i can and you know most pastors that i've talked to uh, actually, all of them, when it comes right down to it, you know, have the call or have heard the call. And when, when did you first know that you'd heard that call and that was what you wanted to do and that was what you were, were expected to do? Well, I started one, one uh, cold November morning. And when I was coming up, I didn't, wear, we did, I didn't have pants, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, in 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 uh, like like we will now. Yes, sir. I had a fifty-pound flower sack with two arms cut in and a head, mm -hmm. and that that that's that was my apparel. That's what I wore until you know I was I got to be about I guess nine or ten years old because the morning I heard God call, I was about seven years old. Early in the morning, on a slide pecan tree trying to find me some pecans, something to eat. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's when I heard the call. Three. It's a paper share pecan. You can, you can, you know, you could crack, you didn't have to do, just you put two together and crack them. Kind of like a mayhem. Yes, a sir. paper share pecan, what it is. Yes, sir. And back then, things was tough. Mm -hmm. I was, I was uh, living with my great, with my granddaddy and grandmother. My mother was off somewhere working, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, grandmother, you know, they, they've done what they could, but I was out trying to get me something to eat that morning. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, how did you end up, um, I mean, was it just because you had grown up here? Um, was that how you ended up uh, 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 becoming, you know, taking on this, this role at Springfield, you know, because you'd, you'd been a part of it from when well, you were Well, the like I said, the, the, those old men, they took me under their wings. Yes, sir. You know, and that's, you know, it just went from there. I, you know, nothing, uh, you know, I'd done out the ordinary, no more than those men, you know, and they treated me like... Uh, I was their daddy instead of they, my granddaddy. They really, really thought a lot of me. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Now, you mentioned um, that um, when you were uh, had, you know, the call that you were living with your uh, uh, granddaddy, granddaddy and grandmother. Grand granddaddy mm -hmm. and grandma. Do you mind if I ask what were their names? What were their names? My granddaddy's name was Hansel Nelson. Hansel Nelson. Mm-hmm. And my grandmother was Edie Crumity Nelson. Edie Crumity. I've heard her name before. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you this. Are you kin to uh, Mr. Nelson um, uh, that works um, at the school is, is, you know, one of the folks that's there? He, he uh, has mentioned that, that his family's, you know, from, from this part of the county. Yeah, that's, that's my cousin. Okay. That, right. That's 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 Raymond. Yes, that's the that's one. Raymond. That's yeah, that's Raymond that's Nelson. my cousin. All right, cool. Um, let me um, also ask this, if I could. Uh, um, in the time that you've uh, uh, been um, the head of the Paul Bear Society, I mean, obviously there's been you know a lumber changes and a lot of things <clears> that were here. Um, what? Uh, 
would you say um, um, if you were thinking about you know what it's taken to uh, keep the site here and protect or preserve it what's probably been your biggest challenge in making sure that the cemetery stays open and the people and the families can still use it well we 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 had to uh, keep it you know like we kind of manicured so we had to raise uh, you know we went from 10 cent to 25 cents and to from that to three dollars a year mm -hmm. and you know to just to maintain the uh, appearance of the cemetery yes sir mm -hmm. okay um let me ask this also if i could um since this was part of the the uh, casa bianca you mentioned that this road has shifted a bit over time yeah when you were a boy when you remember this you were saying um um uh where exactly the area over there where Casa Bianca Church is, where was the road between there and here back then? Was it where the paved roads are now or was no, it somewhere else? No, no, okay. no. Okay. Mm -mm. All right. Where it, do you it, remember uh, running? It came, we had a tree. Everything was trails. There wasn't no roads. They were trails. Yes, sir. And we had a trail, like I say, it's about at least a mile and three quarter from here to where a where road was. And back then, didn't wasn't no such thing as no hearse. It was it was wagons, mm -hmm. you know. Now we they when they went to get in the road, we started with hearses, mm -hmm. them old fashioned hearses, mm -hmm. you know. The, those roads so bad, sometimes they would get stuck. You had to get the mule to pull them, you know, to pull them through and and pull them out and in. And it just as civilization got better we you know we just got a chance to build some roads yes sir yes sir okay. all right reverend thompson we were just talking a second um um now you had said before i believe i just remember this is springfield paul bears number 10 mm -hmm. all right now the question i think that was asked is um um was it a part of a larger was, no, it, no. was it off on its own no, was, no. was it ever at one time part of something larger? no no okay okay um, what, did you ever have a situation where you had folks from other churches or other areas that asked to use, uh, the burying ground here? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And, and, you know, I can show you several that, you know, people don't have, don't have, see, we got nine acres here. Mm -hmm. And we got, we have people occasionally homeless, don't have nowhere to, you know, nowhere to be buried. And, uh, with me being the president, I allow, uh, you know, because I, with being president of, of a society, usually the president that they have, they trust their, uh, their, their doing. So mm -hmm. if I uh, would, uh, the Al, uh, old man, uh, William, you, uh, would call me and say, we, we got, somebody, got a, uh, uh, somebody we need to bury and they don't have no insurance, no money, mm -hmm. would you help? And, you know, and I brought that into the Paul Bear Society at mm -hmm. one point, and you know everybody was okay with it. Yes, sir. Okay. I, I want to follow up again. This is Sylvester Peck behind the camera. Uh, with that being said, so there there was set up bylaws in the Constitution to your Paul Bear Society. No, we just we just in the last three months uh, made bylaws. Never, never was no bylaws, you know, like it was just a trust, you know, it was just trust, wasn't, wasn't no bylaws, but uh, with me getting old now, and I'm turning it over, turning my presidency over, and so I got a vice president, and uh, got a president that, uh, you know, and we uh, adopted some bylaws. Another question, Reverend Thompson. I mean, we've talked a lot about about the society and how you came to be, uh, you know, uh, uh, part of it, and some of what you remember here. What are some other things you remember about growing up here in Jefferson County? And and what do you think? Of, I mean, and this may be a bit of a loaded question, but aside from what you remember growing up, what what do you, how do you feel about Jefferson County now? What 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 kind of changes have you seen in your lifetime? I. Uh, I ain't seen many changes. I ain't seen many changes here in Jefferson County. But one thing I can say, you know, I love this county. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been here and I've been all over the United States working. You know, I've done construction work uh, in my after I quit farming. And uh, 
I love Jefferson County, and Jefferson County got some fair folks in it. Yes, sir. You know, and and with one, with that being said, you know, I've seen some rough times here. Mm -hmm. You know, but uh, uh, it's it's home. Yes, it's sir. Home. Yes, sir. Now you mentioned that. Um, how how did you um, um, get into doing construction? Uh, my brother, you know, works in building too. I just kind of curious about that. Well, uh, like I say, coming up, you know, coming up when you get get uh, the farming, you know, he's got uh, where you know you couldn't make a living out of farming, and the next best thing was to do just get whatever. And I always mecha was mechanically inclined, mm -hmm. and uh, I started, you know. Uh, with a man uh, trucking company uh, doing tire work doing you know and mm -hmm. from tire work to brake work and right on and I just worked myself up through and uh, I could always drive operate machinery so uh, mm -hmm. like I said life just ain't been a bed of roses for me but you know it's been life and I you know I pretty well enjoyed it yes, out of the rough times I had and Never had no no real rough time with with people, you know. We even integrated here, and Mr. Peck can tell you, you know, we didn't have no trouble with uh, with uh, the other race much, you know. Mm -hmm. So we we've been we've been pretty blessed here in Jefferson County. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, I really really appreciate your uh, talking about you know what you remember, Reverend Thompson, about the area here. Um, I wanted to uh, uh, ask you also, uh, uh, I guess one thing, um, I agree with you. I, I had been in Jefferson County very long, even though I was born in Florida, you know, down further right. south, and I got to agree with you about, about it being a beautiful place. Um, when you had uh, uh, Springfield and Casa Bianca uh, uh, churches start up, um, you said you, you, you don't recall exactly why you had, you know, like the split or, or, or you know, why you had the folks. But you did tell me the, the majority of the people who are buried here are coming from Springfield, even though it was a Casa Bianca. They came place. through Springfield. Yes, sir. They came. Right, and you had said that the majority of the folks that, that were here were coming through Springfield rather than Casa Through, Bianca. not they, exactly from Springfield, mm -hmm. but they came through Springfield mm -hmm. because that was the gateway to this cemetery. Okay. Okay, now the other trails and things went to different homes, uh, where, where people were living, mm -hmm. but the main gateway was coming from the Pineywood Road yes, sir. in here. That was the only road. Now, we had the Walkina Road there, mm -hmm. and also we had 19, but mm -hmm. everything else in between was just trails, okay. you know, wagon trails. and. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now, let me ask you this, because it's something I've been wondering about with the other cemetery. Um, Back when we were looking in the part of that cemetery that, that has like the woods that's overgrown that looks like the older spot, mm -hmm. there was a spot that looked like part of a road. Did there used to be a road that ran from that cemetery over to Casa Bianca Church or over to here? Yeah, they had trails. They had they had trails that come through here. It wasn't roads. It, like I said, it was trails, trails right? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. yes, sir. All right. Well, we had uh, a prison here, prison. Uh, that that where the county road department at? Yes, sir. And they would have those prisoners out, you know, cutting trails and and going to different spots. 